monkey clones, flying cars, and a battery that makes a remarkable amount of cash. You're watching This Week in Science, where we explain how today's biggest stories will impact you tomorrow. At the start of this week, human clones seemed like nothing more than a distant dream, like something that maybe our children's children would have to contend with. But on Wednesday, everything changed. For the first time in history, scientists cloned monkeys using something known as somatic cell nuclear transfer. The reason this matters so much is because we share a large portion of our genetic makeup with primates, meaning we've effectively broken the technical barrier to cloning humans. And there's no going back. Of course, that doesn't mean that we could literally clone an army of humans today. But we know that we could do so using this method. It's just a matter of investing the time and resources to make it a reality. Imagine a world in which you're able to create another you. Need stem cells for super personalized treatments? Your clone will be the perfect donor, a near 100% match. Lose a loved one in a tragic accident? What if you could just make another? Very soon, we'll have the science, the power to do these things. That said, scientists have no intention of cloning humans. Even if they wanted to, national and international regulations ban such work. But not everyone abides by regulations. Something we must realize is that scientific advancements often aren't determined by what we should do, but simply what we can do. We can ban whatever science we want, but we can't stop it. It's time we ask ourselves whether it might be time to consider regulation instead of prohibition. Biologists weren't the only ones hard at work this week. On December 1st, Tesla's 100 megawatt battery system went online in South Australia and has already proved its worth. By soaking up excess energy and then selling it when there's demand, the battery seems to have generated more than $800,000 in revenue in just a couple days. So if you think that removable energy is too expensive to be viable, think again. Thanks to improvements in solar panel efficiency and dropping production costs, the future of renewables is looking brighter than ever. In fact, experts predict that by 2020, renewable energy will be as cheap as, or maybe even cheaper than fossil fuels. It's time to face the facts. Renewable energy is the future. The only things keeping coal alive are lobbyists and their cohorts in government offices. No, really. Energy analysts have made the point time and time again that fossil fuels, not renewable energy, benefit the most from public policy. Fossil fuel production rakes in more than $20 billion in subsidies every year. What's more, air pollution deaths cost the global economy a staggering $225 billion. The profits of U.S. fossil fuels are built on, indeed, they depend on a foundation of government assistance. The fossil fuel industry, not renewables, find their foundation in corporate welfare. And it's time it ends. Fortunately, in the meantime, a number of other nations are picking up the slack. Chinese investment in 2017 across all clean energy technologies totaled more than $130 billion, up a staggering 24%, set an all-time record. And on an even brighter note, did you watch The Jetsons when you were growing up? Well, earlier this week, Uber said some of the show's most futuristic technologies are just around the corner. Speaking of Munich this week, Uber's CEO said that a seemingly impossible vehicle will break through the boundaries of science fiction and materialize in our cities in the next 10 years. Of course, he's talking about flying cars. This may seem a bit unbelievable, but he's quite serious. In fact, Uber believes so firmly in the future of flying cars that in November of 2017, they launched a project called Elevate that aims to create on-demand urban air transportation. In short, it's an aerial taxi service. But not everyone is excited about flying cars, and with good reason. Imagine you're driving down the road and your hubcap flies off. Now that may be annoying to fix, but it's not deadly. The same can't be said if we're talking about flying cars. As Elon Musk succinctly sums, if somebody doesn't maintain their flying car, it could drop a hubcap and guillotine you. And what if you run out of power? Instead of slowly moving to the side of the road and quietly coming to a stop, a flying car would plummet from the sky, very likely killing all passengers. And if it hits a building as it comes down, the results would be catastrophic. As much as I'd like to zoom to work at the grocery store soaring above the earth, flying cars seem to be fundamentally at odds with our infrastructure, and they would be prohibitively expensive. Still, there are a number of futuristic forms of transportation that are viable. Take the Hyperloop. It uses vacuum tubes to transport people at speeds exceeding 1,000 kilometers an hour. Then there's jetpacks, which, believe it or not, already exist. There's autonomous cars, supersonic jets, and this is just the beginning. Where do you think transport will take us in the next 10 years? Leave your thoughts in the comments. And to learn more about what the future has in store for you, head over to futurism.com. I'm Jolene Creighton. Thanks for tuning in.